Okay, guys, continuing on with the uh, test review here. The next one is the neutral calculation. So for this one, we've got uh, 20 amps being drawn on phase A. So this guy right here is drawing 20 amps. We've got 30 amps being drawn on phase B. So this load right here is drawing 30 amps. And then there's 40 amps being drawn on this guy right here. Remember, they're not, those currents are not happening at the same time. This current right here is happening at zero degrees. This current right here for phase B is happening at 120 degrees. And this guy for C is happening at 240 degrees. All right, if we write those guys out in different vectors, then we've got the red, right? So we've got a red vector right here. Easy enough. So there's our red vector at, what, 20 amps, and the angle is at 0 degrees. It's right on the x-axis. Then we've got a value of 30 amps for the black. So that value is right here. Come on. There we go. Okay, so a little bit larger at 30 amps, and the angle there is at 120 degrees. And then in Canada, our third phase is a blue, so that is a little bit longer at 40 amps. I guess I'll just draw it a little bit longer there. So that guy is 40 amps, and the angle is happening at 240 degrees, right? Because we have 120, and 120, and 120. So we've got 120 plus 120 gives me the 240. So all we have to do is we have to break these guys down into their X and Y coordinates because we can't just add up these two forces. They're not happening at the same time, but they do share the X and Y coordinates. And when I'm talking about X and Y coordinates, I'm drawing in my Y component and my X component here. Anything on this side is going to be a positive X. Anything on this side is going to be a negative X. Anything above the x-axis is going to be a positive y value. Anything below the x-axis is going to be a negative y component. Okay, so let's take a look at each of these guys. This one right here, we can see that it's sitting right on the x-axis. So everything's going to be right here. There will be no y component whatsoever. But let's just draw those guys in. So for this guy, I'm going to find the x component for A, and I'm going to take the cos of the angle. So I'm going to take cos of 0 degrees and multiply that by my hypotenuse at 20 amps. And here the y component for the a vector is going to be equal to the sine of 0 degrees. And we'll multiply that by our hypotenuse. Okay, so let's bring up our calculator and take a look at each of those values. So we've got uh, the cos of 0 degrees, I'm going to close the brackets there, and then I'm going to multiply by my hypotenuse of 20, and that gives me 20. You can see that everything's sitting right on the x-axis. So this is going to be 20, and not only is it 20, it's a positive 20 value. Okay, we're going to have to keep track of whether it's a positive or a negative. Then if we take a look at the other component for the y side, well, if we do the sine of 0 degrees and we close that bracket, multiply it by our hypotenuse, we should get a value of 0. There we go. So there's our 0. There's no y component whatsoever. So this guy right here is nothing. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our second vector here. And if we draw a line down to create a right angle triangle, then we'll be able to find our x component. We can see here that our x component is going to be a negative x component. And here we're going to find our y component. And we'll see that that is going to give us a positive y component for our second vector. Okay, same thing, same recipe. We're going to take the x component for b. We're going to take the cos of 120 degrees. And when you take that 120 degrees, rather than the 60 that remains here, um, we're going to use this angle rather than this angle here because when we use the 120, it's already going to give us a negative x and a positive y component. Okay, so we're doing the cos of the angle times our hypotenuse. And be careful when dyslexia kicks in. I was on cruise control there. 
I've got to keep track of the fact that I'm now at 30 amps for that second vector there. Okay, my y component for the B phase is going to be the sine of that angle, so sine of 120 degrees times my 30 amps, and we'll find that guy as well. So let's find the x component first. Okay, so let's clear this out. So we've got the cos of 120 degrees. On my calculator, I have to put a bracket in. Then I'm going to multiply it by my hypotenuse, and that gives me negative 15. So see how that already gives me that negative there? So it gives me the polarity that I already figured was coming in with that negative value for the x. Okay, the y component should be a positive. Let's take a look at that. So let's do the, the sine of 120. Again, I have to put a bracket there. I'm going to multiply by my 30 amps. And that gives me 25.98. So that's a positive value at 25.98. Excellent. So this value right here is negative 15. This value right here is 25.98. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the B vector. And again, we're going to take a right angle triangle and find our components for that final vector here. So we're going to drop this line down to our x-axis. We create a right angle triangle. There is an angle here, but we're more interested in the angle from our reference here. This is always our reference here at zero degrees. So we're going to take the angle at 240. Okay, so it looks like we're going to have a negative x component and a negative y component for that c vector. Okay, so for that guy, again, same recipe. We're going to take the x of c. We're going to take the cos of 240 degrees. And we're going to multiply it by our hypotenuse of 40 amps. And then here we're going to have our y component for c. We're going to take the sine of 240 degrees. We're going to multiply it by our 40 amps as well. Excellent. Okay, let's see what those guys give us. So we've got the cos of 240, so cos of 240, brackets, times my 40 amps, and that gives me negative 20. Before I started to put that into the calculator, I already figured out that it was going to be a negative because it's on the other side of my y-axis. My y is also going to be a negative as well. Let's just double check with the calculator. Okay, so we've got the sine of 240 degrees. We're going to multiply it by our hypotenuse of 40. That gives me negative 34.64. Okay, now that we've found all of those values, here I have a negative 20 and a negative 34.64. They're all sitting on the x and the y axes now. So now I have all the components for each of my vectors there. And now I can find my resultant. So the next thing we're going to do in the chart is going down this way, we're going to add them up. Okay, so here for my resultant, I'm going to do my resultant in green. Ready? So my resultant here for my x component is going to be positive 20 from here, minus 15, minus 20. Right, so we can see that these two are going to cancel out, and I'm going to be left with a negative 15. Okay, so that tells me that I'm going to be either in, if I put in my quadrants, 1, 2, 3, and 4, if I have a negative x component, I'm either going to be in the second quadrant or the third quadrant, because this is my negative x over here. So let's see if I get a positive or negative y component for my resultant. So my y component for my resultant is going to be equal to 0 plus 25.98 minus 34.64. Okay, so let's see what that is. So I've got uh, 25.98 as a positive value. I'm going to subtract. 34.64, that gives me minus 8.66. 
Okay, so now I've got the two components for my resultant vector. If we draw out our resultant vector now, so I'm going to get rid of this, guys. So I'm going to draw in, again, my x and my y axes here. There's my y axis. There's my x axis. It looks like I have a value of negative 15. So I'm coming over here, negative 15. And then I've got a value of negative 8.66. So I'm going to draw this a little bit more like this. And then I'm going to go down 8.66. So this is negative 15 for my x component. My y component is negative 8.66. And my resultant is going to be right here. That's going to be my neutral current. Okay, the angle between those guys is right here. But again, when we find that angle, it's going to have to add on to the 180 degrees that we've already passed from our reference point at 0 degrees. The reason why our reference point is at 0 degrees is, for one, we need a reference point. Uh, and for two, that's where everything's in phase. That's where our resistive component is happening. So we're always using 0 as our reference. And the convention is that these vectors are going in a counterclockwise direction. So our next thing we need to do is we have our adjacent, we have our opposite, and we need to find our new resultant hypotenuse. Okay, so again, this part right here is my adjacent, this column right here is my opposite, and this guy is my total or my hypotenuse. So my neutral current is now going to be equal to negative uh, 15, squared plus my negative 8.66 squared and then I'm going to take the square root of those values. Now you're going to square these values. You're going to multiply 15, negative 15 times negative 15. That's going to give you a positive value. You're going to multiply negative 8.66 times negative 8.66. That's also going to give you a positive value. So I wouldn't put those negatives in there. I would just keep them out. They're going to be positive anyways. So let's do 15 squared. Where's my squared? There we go. So 15 squared uh, plus my 8.66 squared. Now I don't think this is going to give me the right value because I don't have my brackets in there, right? So why don't we draw this out exactly the same because as soon as I start to do this, I may get the, the incorrect value. So I'm going to clear it out and I'm going to I'm going to put this in exactly how I have it written. So I'm going to take the, the second function, square root, uh, and I'm going to do double brackets, actually. I'm going to put brackets around everything here. I'm going to put a bracket here and a bracket here. So I'm going to take the square root of 15, bracket, squared, plus, bracket, 8.66 squared, I'm not putting in the negatives because I know I'm going to get a positive value anyways. Uh, my square is here, and then I'm going to do another bracket there to close everything up. Then I hit equals. Okay, so my final value is 17.32. Okay, so you can see how I put this in exactly as I could, the same as I had written it out here. If you're using the other Casio calculators, you're not able to physically see how you're placing that into the calculator. So if you can't picture that in your head, purchase another calculator so you can see exactly how you've put this into your equation. It makes your life a lot easier. Our neutral current is 17.32 amps. So this value right here is 17.32. So that's telling us that on our neutral right here, we're going to have 17.32 amps flowing. We have 20 amps on A, we have 30 amps on B, we have 40 amps on C. None of these currents are happening at the same time. The neutral carries the unbalanced load. There's clearly an unbalance in our loading here on A, B, and C. And the vector sum of those guys ends up being 17.32 amps on the neutral. Okay, so the last thing we need to find is the angle that goes with this neutral current. I mean, you're only going to use the angle if you're going to go farther and do an additional load on top of this. 
uh, because it doesn't really matter which way their current is actually flowing on the neutral. It's going to hurt either way. 17.32 amps is going to give you a kick in the butt. Uh, but let's take a look at the angle just to finish this guy off. So the angle is right here, and we have this triangle where we've organized all of our values there. So let me just redraw that triangle over here. So I'm going to eliminate this just so I can give myself a little bit more room to work. So we've got all of our values now for our neutral current. We've found that our X component is minus 15. We found that our Y component was minus 8.66. And we just found our total neutral current to be 17.32. Okay, that's a positive. Hypotenuse is always a positive value. Okay, so these guys meet at 90 degrees. And at this point, we can use uh, sine, right? Right here, we have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So we could use sine. We could use cos with the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Or we could use tan with the opposite and the adjacent. Any one of those guys, we can find that angle that exists right here for that neutral current. So out of those choices with sine, cos, and tan, I would probably use tan because tan is going to take in, into account the x component and the y component, right? So that's going to tell you exactly uh, the angle that's going to be in that triangle there. So let's use tan. Other ones, like I've used cos before and it gives you um, an angle, but then it's harder for me to explain how that angle adds to the 180 degrees. So let's use tan. We're going to do the inverse tan. And tan is TOA, right? So the opposite over the adjacent. So with that guy, we'd have the inverse tan of the opposite minus 8.66 over the adjacent at minus 15. And let's find that value. Okay, so what have we got? We've got uh, second function, tan. And we're going to do the ratio of minus 8.66 divided by uh, minus 15, close brackets, and that gives us 29.99999. Okay, so that's basically giving us 30 degrees as our angle. So the angle that's inside that triangle is 30 degrees. Okay, but don't go and put that angle right there because 30 degrees is in the first quadrant, right? From here to here would be 30 degrees. But we're in, obviously, looking at this diagram, we're in the second, we're in the third quadrant here out of our four quadrants. So we just found this angle right here at 30 degrees. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put that angle, come on, we're gonna put that angle right there at 30 degrees. Okay, but our reference point where we started at was right here. So we had the 180 degrees from here to here, plus the 30 degrees that we just found in our triangle. So the angle for the neutral current is actually at 210 degrees. Okay, so again, one more time, because I always lose you guys here. We put all our values here on a right angle triangle with the minus 15, the minus 8.66, and the positive 17.32. Minus 15 was the adjacent, minus 8.66 was the opposite, and our 17.32 was the hypotenuse. I chose to use tan. Tan is the opposite over the adjacent. And I, when I did the inverse of that ratio, I found that my angle within this triangle was 30 degrees. I transferred that 30 degrees over to here but I can't put that right here for my value because 30 degrees is in my first quadrant, and we've clearly shown that it's in the third quadrant here. So we started our reference point going counterclockwise. We go 90, 180, plus the 30. So 180 plus the 30 gives us our final angle of 210 degrees. All right, guys, we'll stop there. Uh, next video in the playlist will be the three-phase uh, RLC circuit.